And then, uh, you know, we read some songs and we kind of, you know, modeled ourselves on some other bands. <laughs> Just a little bit. And, um, and, uh, and we wrote our own tunes and demoed them and then, you know, went out and played them in the pubs. And, and we endured a lot because you've got to remember, the days were of pub rock. And uh, we, would, uh, we would be offered supports to, to many of the local pub rock bands like uh, uh, Aussie Crawl and, and uh, Swanee. And, yeah. they, were, they were great bands, but um, you know, we were kind of poof rock. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very brave of us to, to, uh, to enter the stage with uh, more, more makeup than anything else. And, um, and uh, you know start our show without a drummer in those days we just had a drum machine we used to push the start button and off we went with three synthesizers and uh, after a while of doing that we, we got pretty good and um, yeah we started having a few people at our shows you know five six and and um, <laughs> then, it, then it got a bit more and then, then it was going good and it went all right and then and then they offered us a, a support with Susie and the Banshees and so so that was big time for us we went wow this is fantastic you know this, this is a big act and she had some guitarist, uh, Robert Smith, I think his name was. <laughs> he, he was in some other band, and <laughs> that was cool. Saw Robert backstage, you know, he was kind of tripping. And um, <laughs> he was tripping big time. <laughs> I love your band. But um, uh, so we did our first sort of big show, and um, what I did is um, before the show, I, I went into my dad's office and uh, I designed a logo, this kind of keyboard guy with the pseudo I think it was up before, maybe it'll come up again. But, um, and, uh, and then I went out after the show. The show was kind of mediocre because uh, it was a big round dome, the Astor Theatre, mainly concrete and <laughs> not great for acoustics. And when you got a rhythm machine, it was playing like double. <laughs> so it was kind of doo -doo 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 like that. So we couldn't really hear shit and we just got it played on and, and uh, it went out okay anyway. And, uh, I, I went out straight after the show and uh, plastered um, bill posters, little bill posters I photocopied in my dad's office. I used all his ink and all his paper and, and fucked up all his drafting tools. And <laughs> the logo came up great, <laughs> but uh, that was cool. And um, I must have posted maybe I don't know, 500 bills around the venue while the Banshees were playing on everybody's car. We even had stickers made uh, in the Pseudo Echo logo and I, I would sort of select cool looking cars and stick them on the back hoping they wouldn't know for a few weeks. And then people would go, what is this Pseudo Echo? It's on a Porsche, it must be good. <laughs> Seriously, I did, I did that. <laughs> I think I stole the Porsche logo while I was at it and used it for Pseudo Echo. It was very similar. Either that and, and the hand dryer and the Dunnies. Uh, Roche, Roche, so that ripped off the Porsche logo too. But anyway. So uh, where I'm getting to is that Molly came to one of our shows soon after, after I did all the posters. Right? So, so because there were so many people at the Banshees, um, because, and I posted all my posters everywhere, and it said, you know, come to the next show, sort of like a modern electronic music or something like that. And uh, our next show was packed. <laughs> it was fantastic. Like, we usually would have, you know, 80 people. This one had like three or 400. <laughs> we were rocking. And that just happened to be the one that Molly came to, so he thought we were huge. <laughs> and he said, have you got a demo tape? And we said, you bet. And just gave it to him right then and there. And, um, and then like a couple of weeks later, he called up and said, we want to put you on Countdown. So, <laughs> it, it was the weirdest thing, you know, we didn't have a record deal. <laughs> and, and the ABC had a policy of not putting anyone on a list that were signed to a major label, but they broke that policy for Pseudo Echo, which was very nice of them. They made us a video clip and everything. They, uh, yeah, we were indebted to them at this day, so thanks to the ABC and Molly and the crew of Countdown, they were rocking. And, uh, and this is the song that we opened with, and uh, I had red hair, I had one of those brown sound blaster jackets with a zip, and uh, I think I had these suede boots with buckles, they were fucking rocking. <laughs> they cost the equivalent of about two grand, I reckon. <laughs> they were a lot of money, but they were worth it, I still got them. And I got the jacket too, I can't zip it up, but it, it's fucking cool. It's there somewhere, it looks like Indiana Jones anyway, so... You want to play? I'm going to play, uh, we're going to play.